the chase the chase for money it never ends and it is a very oh it's a, it's a scary thing to think about i mean it's a good thing right I, I it is technically a good thing there's always something to strive for but at the same time it is scary because the thought at least for me right for someone like me the thought of something never ending it's scary the thought that hustling non-stop grinding non-stop and then when you reach that goal you want more you want more you want more it's it, it, it's it's i don't know if this is the right word nerve-wracking for me because what do you do when you finally reach your goals you just keep setting higher goals or do you stop and if you stop is that bad and i i think it's really easy to say yeah it's not bad to just stop if you haven't even reached the goals that you want to reach in your life right but for me it's like if i stop it's like i'm giving up and i'm the type of personality i'm the type of person where i don't like giving up and so like what i want to talk about in particular in in, in tech as a software engineer, we get paid insane amount of money, right? We get paid a lot of money and opportunities out there are insane. Like look at Figma being purchased for $20 billion. Imagine the first 100 people that joined that company that got acquired by Adobe, how much money they are worth now, and in particular CEOs, but that's, that's very few, very few people out there. I'm talking about software engineers who joined a startup like that. It never stops. Which is kind of scary when you really think about it. Um, and why is this in particular software engineers? Is because I mean, for people like me, I tried everything outside of tech to make it. I tried being a nurse. I tried being a, you know, I tried being an electrical engineer. I tried a lot of different things, and I only realized only what a year ago I had dyslexia, or maybe nine months ago. Unfortunately, no, a year ago. Yeah, year year and a half ago, I think actually. Maybe it's your guy. I don't remember. And only realizing recently that dyslexia makes everything just so much harder. And I wish I knew I had that so I could have figured out how to fight around my struggles. But anyway, if it wasn't for tech, I wouldn't make six figures right now. I know that for a fact. I wouldn't have been able to taste what just a little bit of what success tastes feels like. Right. In tech, you make 70K a year your first year, maybe 60, maybe 50. It feels amazing. And then you think, oh, what if I made 90K a year? That'd be amazing. And it doesn't have to be six figures. You make 90K a year. You get about what, how much per month? Um, $2,500 every two weeks or something, depending on where you live, state taxes, et cetera, federal taxes, depending on what you're taxed. And then you make 90K a year. That's not enough. You realize, oh my gosh. When I was making nothing, I thought 90K a year was a lot. And then you make 90K and you're like, I want more. And you finally make six figures. You make 120K a year. This is nice. $3,500 every two weeks is nice. That's enough to survive. With $3,500 alone, I could pay my rent, my car, my utilities. And the other $3,500, that's enough, right? But you, then you make it there and you start living like that, that lifestyle for, uh, or it's living making that income for a year or two. And you're like, I want more. You start making more. You finally hit 180k a year. Wow, ten thousand dollars a month after taxes is nice. I'm like, no, I want. I'm so close to reaching that 200k mark. I want to make 200k a year. You hit making 200 thousand dollars a year, and what happens? You hit 200k. You make twelve thousand dollars per month after taxes if you're living in a, 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 a city where there's no state income tax in California. That's about ten thousand five hundred bucks per month after taxes. That's a lot of money. You start living a life. You start saving even more money. You be able to um, buy more things. You can travel more. You know, you have more things you can invest in. And you're like, wow, how much more can I invest when I make more than 200k? And you just want more, all right? And you start making 300k. Oh, what? How much would it feel? What would it feel like if I made 40, 50k in a month? I made a 50,000. I made 43,000 dollars a month. And I'm like, this is so much money. And then the next month, I'm like, really, that's it? And it's scary because, like, for me, my situation, I've reached that point in my career. In my life, not technically career, I make over 300k because of YouTube and tech combined. But like, so I get there, and 
yo, I made a video of me making like 43K in a month, right? The next couple of weeks after that, yo, I, I, I didn't tell anyone this. My depression went to a whole different level. Why? Because this is what happens. This is what's going through my mind. I'm making an insane amount of money, more money than I could ever dream of, to be honest. Not just as an engineer, but in life. The fact I was able to achieve this, not only and solely because of my tech salary, but because I worked my ass off building a business. And then I'm sitting on my couch behind me, and I'm looking at everything that I have, and I'm like, I have everything I could ever want. I can buy whatever I want. I can buy the car that I want. $3,000 monthly payment on a Lamborghini or a really nice-ass Porsche, no problem at all, right? That's nothing. That's pocket change. But I didn't do it, but what I'm saying is, like, I can buy what I want. And that's it. Like, I made it. I made it, but I'm not any more happier. Now, I and, and I, I, I think this gets to the point where people do say, yo, money does not buy happiness. Money does not buy happiness. It doesn't. That's for sure. It does not buy happiness. But it, 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 it pays your bills, right? I don't have to worry about my bills. I, I don't care how much my electric bill costs. I don't care how much my roaming charges cost when I travel the, the world. I don't care how much my car payment is, how, how much gas prices go up. I don't care about that, right? That, that's amazing. The fact I don't have to worry about those small, the, the, not, it's not small, but I don't have to worry about the things that so many people worry about is amazing. But then I have everything. And the American dream, you, you live the life that you, you've only been dreaming of. When I was living paycheck to paycheck, struggling, wishing, oh, what did it feel like to make X amount of dollars? What would I feel like? And then I, I get there and I feel exactly the same. Minus the worries. I feel exactly the same. And, and, and I remember thinking, is that it? Like I can strive for more. I have a great job. I have a great team. My side business is killing it. But is that it? Because I can see why people who, who you know, make it up there, yeah, they fight with their mental health. Because now people who start coming to me, messaging me, is because they want my money now. Not that I'm super rich. I'm not. I, I still don't think I'm rich. I'm, I don't think so. Um Right. Like last month I made what 43k. This month I'm making 30k. Right. So it goes up and down. But like now when people approach me, it's because they want to take my money. They want to sell something to me. They want something from me. They offer service to me in return for my money. Um, that's why people approach you. It's very different compared to before where people approach me because they just want to say hi. Right. And so people just start wanting to talk to you because of how much money you make and it gets depressing from there it, it, because it, you start to see who who's real or not are you just like me where i want to learn computer science but i do not have the time or the money to go back to college and get a computer science degree well what if i told you that there was a way that you could learn computer science without going back to college this is where you can check out boot.dev Boot.dev is a place where you can primarily learn back-end development. What Boot.dev does is that they take a more methodical approach when it comes to learning how to program. And what they don't miss out on is on the computer science fundamentals. In fact, computer science is a core part of their curriculum in the first place. Now, what is even more amazing is the fact that all of the content is free to read. But of course, the later assignments require you to become a patron of the website yourself. Some of the languages that you can learn on boot.dev is Python, JavaScript, and Go. And if you all want to check them out, go to boot.dev. I'll put the link in the description below. And boot.dev, I want to thank you for sponsoring this video. For example, family members. Chris, it's my birthday. Can you can you buy me this? It's only 500 bucks. It's only $1,000. Chris, you make so much money. That's nothing to you, Chris. And then after you give them that money, you know what they do? They disappear until the birthday the next year. Chris, come on. Don't you love me? Oh, I love you too, Chris. I love you too, Chris. 
and then disappear. What that does to you, what I feel like is like, I can't trust anyone, right? I like, I mean, I trust people. I trust my video editor. I trust my fiance. I trust my parents. That's it. <laughs> um, and I think that's why family is so important. I trust my friends. I trust my friends. But it, it, it's hard for me to believe that when people talk to me, they want to talk to me because most of the time it's because they want something from you. And that's kind of scary. And, 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 and it, that's honestly lonely. That's very lonely. And so really what I'm trying to share for everyone who's listening and watching this is that like that money is nice. Aim for those goals. That's not bad. It's not bad to have these goals to reach that particular level, right? But I think it's very important that you make sure that you really understand yourself and what will truly make you happy. Once you get there, contentfulness is very important. Strive for more. But don't let that just be everything in your life. Right? Like for me, I found some hobbies and I, I, I can't talk about it, but I found some hobbies that I'm really into and I love it. Right. And, and I'm really looking at my life and I, I can live my life with no worries. Just work my nine to five, even if I never had YouTube anymore. Yo, I make decent income where YouTube doesn't work fine. Podcast doesn't work fine. I'm still happy. Right. So like for me, it's like what makes me happy and what makes me happy is helping people. That's why I literally why I still do YouTube. I think that. A part of me, when I tasted how much money I could make, how I can be a millionaire like that by just trying to make money here and there and there, it, it kind of ate inside of me because I am the most happy when I just genuinely want to help people, when I make content where I just want to help people, where people reach out to me and I want to help them, right? But I don't want to be taken advantage of. That's different. And so for me, it's I'm going to keep doing what I do. Right? The money goes up, money goes up. I love being a developer. Excuse me. <sighs> I didn't get that much sleep. I'm flying to London later. But if the money goes up, the money goes up. At the end of the day, if, as long as I'm doing what I'm happy doing, as long as I'm happy, that's more important. I take precedence over everything else. And I think it's really important. The money is amazing. I'm not going to lie. But, yo, like, like, it feels great. Like, I, I bought this monitor, right? This ultra, ultra-wide Samsung Odyssey Arc. I don't feel any better than I did before I bought it. Like, I have this nice monitor. So much freaking real estate I'm looking at right now. It's really nice. It is. Is it making a difference in my life? Not at all whatsoever. I mean, I guess it's nice I can play the Xbox on this big monitor rather than my TV behind me. That's it. Life-changing. No, not at all. Four thousand dollars, extremely expensive. Not necessary. It's a tax write-off, right? Um, I'm gonna do a tech review on it. I use it for literally mainly work. Pay less in taxes. That's it. It's life-changing. No, not at all. And it, it, it's just crazy, yo. Like thinking for so long, I want to be where I am today. I'm here. It's like now what? It's it, it, it's sad because I've been working for this. Yeah, I've been working to do whatever I can to get here for six for six years to get to this position, and I'm here. And it's like now what? I didn't think I'd get here this fast. I thought it would take me 10, 15, 20 years. I got here in six. It's like, now what? So I, I think my goal for me is really enjoy life like crazy. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to I'm gonna keep making content on YouTube. I'm going to keep doing podcasts. I'm going to keep working in tech, even though if I don't need to work in tech. I do it because I love it. I love helping people as a developer advocate. I love giving talks. I love traveling. 
But I think I'm going to stop striving. I don't know if I'm going to stop. We'll see, but I'm going to make it a goal to be as content as possible. That's so hard, though. It's easier, right? It, it, it is 1 million percent easier said than done because there's always so much more. Oh, my gosh. Look at that nice house. That's a $2 million house. If I work this much harder, if I try to do this things, if I reach these goals and try to make this much money every month, I can buy the house like that. But I don't need that house. Is that house going to make me any happier like this modern that I have? I mean, it'd be nice to have a big house. I mean, not just big, a mansion, pretty much. Will it change my life? No. Luxury? Living a life, I'll be living in luxury? Yeah. I'll, I, I'll get there in time, but I don't have that. And I think that's my problem. Is like I try to get to that position overnight. I'll do whatever I can to get to that position as fast as freaking possible. And I think that's just too much. I think just understanding that you can get there in time. It doesn't have to be a rush. But as long as I'm happy as hell doing what I'm doing, I think that's the most important. And so what I'm trying to say is that, yo, the money is nice. The, the rat race never ends. Whether you have a boss or not, it never ends. It keeps going. You always want more. You always want more. You always want more. And so how am I fighting that? By, under, by understanding that, yeah, I, you always want more. But what you have is enough. Now, I, I, I used to think with the mindset like, yeah, what I have now is enough. But 20 years from now, is that enough? No, 200K years from now, $200,000 a year, 10 to 20 years from now, I don't I don't think it'll be as nearly as much as it is today. Right now, making 100K a year, you, depending on where you live, you can't even really buy a decent house. You can't. <laughs> right? But 20 years ago, 10, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, let's say. Yeah, you could. So what about 10, 20 years from now? 200K a year, is that enough to buy a decent house? I'd say yes. Not nearly as decent as today. 200k from 20 years from now, $200,000 salary will be like a, maybe 100 what 100,000 salary is now. Well, or it was 20 years ago, right? So maybe 10 to 20 years from now, make it a goal to make 300k, 350, 400k, which is very attainable, especially in tech, right? Um, very, very attainable, depending on how hard you work and your goals and how bad you want it. And so that mindset comes to me and why I never want to settle. But there's no rush. There's no rush. I found hobbies I love doing it. I don't want to share with the world. I want to keep that part to myself. I share everything else um, to my only my fiance knows. Um, I have these hobbies I love doing. Right, I, I love gaming. Um, all these other things, right? Just want to let y'all know, yo. When you get there, yeah, it's amazing. You're happy, but. Understand that you'll always want more. Do whatever you can to fight that because, yo, for me at least, myself, it's mentally draining. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to end this short episode here. I want to thank y'all for watching this episode. And I'll see y'all in the next one. I'm flying out to London and Paris today, this afternoon. I'm leaving at 2 p.m. And so I'm going to film the next episode in my nice London condo. I'm going to bring this microphone. And I can't wait to do that episode there with y'all. I'll see y'all in a bit. And love you all. Thank y'all for wish. For, thank you all for listening and the support. If y'all, if you know what, if anyone made it to the end, it would mean the world to me. If you could leave a comment below, let me know. And let me know your thoughts. If there's any thoughts you have on what I talked about, um, please. Even even if you're not a normal person that leaves comments, I don't leave comments on videos. But if y'all can leave a comment on this video, just let me know your thoughts. It would mean the world to me. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next episode. Peace.